Lincoln was assassinated, his body was transferred from Washington, D.C. to Springfield, Illinois. They say it made several stops along the way. Many mourners came to pay their last respects. They say at one point, the funeral procession passed through the city of Albany that was carried through the streets. There was a black woman who stood on the edge of the curb. She lifted up her son as far as she could above the heads of the crowd. That black woman hollered out and she said, take a long look, honey. He died for you. And well, if I could just reiterate that message to you today, I'd like to lift up your spirit so that you might see Calvary. I'd like to point you towards that old rugged cross and towards Jesus Christ, an even greater emancipator. And if I could just borrow the words of that old black woman, I'd like to tell you, friend, take a long look. They're a little tired from the job. They're a little weary with work. 
And because of that, they sit down and they watch. They watch him there. And they come on now. Jesus endured agony as he hung on the cross for six straight hours. And there's some people who can't even come to church and sit on a padded pew in a Bible control atmosphere for six hours a week. And don't get me wrong, I know some of us can't always make it to church. I know the busyness of your schedule every once in a while it prevents you from making it to every service. But I feel like there's many who are looking for any old excuse to get out of coming to Sunday morning, to get out of coming to Sunday night, to the midweek service, or to the revival. And then you know what has happened to you? You've lost interest in having a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Somewhere along the line, you've lost your love for your Lord. If you do show up, if you are here, you're present in body, but you're absent in spirit. And my friend, if the death of your Savior does not rouse your conscience, if it does not make you want to show up every time the doors of the sanctuary are open, if it does not inspire you to give him worship and honor and praise, if it does not give you a sense of compassion, you need to check your pulse, you need to fall back on the altar and get saved all over again, because if it does not break your heart, it will harden your heart. There was a French physician by the name of Guy Patton. He introduced the world to a cryptic disease called fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, otherwise known as FOP. It's a rare but traumatic disorder that turns tissues, muscles, tendons, and ligaments of the human body into bone. Lewis Albert Banks, he told the story of a man who was diagnosed with this disorder several years ago. He was hospitalized in New York. His flesh was quickly turning into solid bone. His case was regarded by physicians with wonder and curiosity. But because the malady was so incurable, it eventually resulted in this man's death. You see, in the physical domain, that disorder is considered to be a very unusual phenomenon. But in the spiritual experience, it is sadly too common. I've witnessed a lot of people, and you probably have too, who are illustrations of the fact that once they were sensitive to the gospel story, they were thin-skinned to the suffering, the persecution, and the death of our Savior. But now, they have become hard-hearted and indifferent. But now, they feel nothing at all. And I'm afraid eventually it will result in the death of their soul. And then some of you are here today. And the things that once moved you towards righteousness, that stimulated your gratitude towards God, that awakened the feeling of responsibility, moves you no more. It leaves you unreceptive and unresponsive. And then my friend, you may not mock him. You may not criticize him or revile him as others do. You may not be sitting in the seat of the scornful. But if you are sitting down and watching him there, you have an apathetic spirit. And there is a danger in that because of the gospel account of Christ's crucifixion no longer touches you. If it does not break your heart, it will harden your heart. I don't know about you. I don't want to sit in complacency. I don't want to sit casually. I don't want to sit comfortably. Big Ben is the nickname of the great bell of the clock at the north end of the palace in Westminster in London, England. A while back, people began to notice that a famous clock was losing time. They said for some reason it was losing between six to eight minutes a day. So a horologist, a professional clock maker, was hired to scope out Big Ben to find out what was wrong. He climbed up in the bell tower 